Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms and welcome back to Survival Antennas. And today we're going to fabricate an antenna that's a very popular design out of the materials we happen to have on hand. An example of these antennas that I've done videos on in the past are here and here. And the antenna design we're going to make is very popular in the LMR spectrum above 30 megahertz and you could certainly fabricate an antenna such as this for the higher hf frequencies if you desire to do so the antenna we're going to make is just a simple ground plane uh, i've built this one before and as in our coax only antenna which would be survival antennas one where you had your shield broken out of your coaxial cable that acted as one of these elements which is known as a radial and what you're doing is is a radial or a counterpoise is basically an artificial ground for when you elevate the antenna above ground and then this is your vertical radiator so it's going to be held erect in relation to the radials at the base of the antenna Another design that I've got a video on is this one here where I've just taken a BNC bulkhead adapter and a piece of aluminum and made a radial plate for our counterpoise or radials, which we have four of. And then the vertical radiator is a telescoping antenna. And it's got the feed line is permanently attached to it here as such. And if you're interested in making a more permanent type of ground plane antenna, I would encourage you to check out these two videos. But today, we're going to build ourselves a ground plane antenna, Cat5 cable, and of course, some 50 ohm RF feed line. And again, if all you have was television coaxial cable, you could certainly utilize that to fabricate this antenna as well. So let's get started. Okay, let's go ahead and prep our cable. We need to take an end of the cable and we need to go back four inches your leatherman tool if you're using a leatherman tool as a multi-tool is four inches long and we're going to remove four inches of jacket now take your shield and fluff up your shield like you did when we broke out our conductors before and you want to come up an inch from your outer jacket and you want to remove all of this braid here and the scissors and the Leatherman tool are the perfect tool for that okay remove that now fold back a half inch of shield just like that now go one inch from here and remove your dielectric. And when you're done, it should look like this. Now let's work on our elements. All of our elements will be able to be made out of our Cat5 cable. So, what we're going to do is, is we already know what length we're going to make it. We're going to make it for VHF, for the amateur band. Using the Survival Antennas single formula system, which is 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz, what we can do is, is know that we're making our antenna for the 2 meter amateur band, the center of which is 146 megahertz. So, if we take 468 and divide it by 146, we have a half wavelength is 3.2 feet long. We divide that result by 2, and that gives us 1.6 feet, which is our quarter wavelength in feet. Now, to make it easier to use for building antennas for the VHF and UHF bands, we're going to go ahead and break that down to inches. So, we multiply 1.6 feet by 12 and that gives us 19.2 inches so 19.2 inches is our quarter wavelength according to this formula now since we're always going to cut our elements longer than necessary because it's easier to trim to resonance than it is to add to resonance we're going to go ahead and cut our elements for 20 inches so we need to be about 20 inches long because we want to cut it long so that is five Leatherman lengths. Of 
it will make it just a little bit longer because better to cut too long than too short what we're going to do is we're going to use one for our vertical radiator and these three are going to be radials and we're going to leave them doubled for strength you can strip out your cat 5 cable and remove your conductors just like that now on three of the conductors that are going to be your radials you want to untwist them about an inch back just score the jacket and use your fingernail to remove the insulation just like that so each one of your radials is going to look like that so do this do these three sections of cable now for your vertical radiator we're going to go back two inches and remove two inches of insulation Just like that. Now that you've got your elements completed, go ahead and just consolidate your bare sections of wire again by twisting them together. Now go ahead and take your feed line end where your braid was. And what you want to do is, is at three equidistant points, take your braid and space out a spot for a radial. Just like that. And slide radial down along the body of the wire and now just go ahead and wrap it around the shield here's a close-up detail on how we are attaching our radials to our feed line and you can see we're just feeding our radial through our feed line and then we're just wrapping around our shield and then we'll go ahead and put the other two radials in at equidistant points and then we merely fold the shield over and this encapsulates all these conductors and as you can see as you fold the shield back over itself our radial connections are going to be encapsulated by this shield and this gives us a place where we can bind this to here to provide about the most positive electrical connection possible using field expedient means for this antenna design. Now, at this point here, if we had electrical tape, we could take some E-tape and wrap E-tape around this and cover this. We could use a wire tie to compress everything together if we had that item, but we're gonna say we don't have those items. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna use some of our Cat5 sheath here. We're gonna make a clove hitch with our Cat5 sheath. The clove hitch, make a round turn cross, make another round turn, then run it under the cross, and you can see how it goes together and binds on itself. Now, on the back side of it, you can make a safety with a simple overhand knot, like that or you can make a safety with a square knot if you have enough cordage. And we're going to pull that thing as tight as we can. And basically we have bound all of our radials together. Now that we've tied this clove hitch, go on the opposite side of it and then just tie a square knot if you have enough sheath left or just a or hand safety will suffice so we end up with something like that there and we can go ahead and attach our vertical radiator just by bending a loop in it or making a bite and basically what we're going to do is, is we're just going to do like we've done on all the other antennas on these in this series is just tie a square knot and make a square knot splice square knot wire splice take both wires Make a bite in one of them, run this wire through and around the bite, then back around the other side of the bite, and then back through again, making a square knot, and then pulling it tight, just like that, and then taking these sections of wire and wrapping them around 
the tails. Like that, the square nut wire splice. And now our vertical radiator is attached. Now what we can do is, is we can take what's left of our Cat5 insulation and simply slide this over top of it. And back down and cover up this splice. And this will also slip down over top of the dielectric. And this makes it so it's gives it the ability to hold the antenna vertical element in a more rigid state. Now we're going to go ahead and folding back about an inch and a half on either side, we're going to go ahead and make a loop for hanging in the top of our antenna. And right now, as it is, we could take and hang this antenna up and it would function as is. It's not very pretty, but we can make it much more pretty. Let's say that we wanted that uh, 45 degree radial angle for our feed point to make it pretty. Well, if we have a piece of cardboard that's roughly a quarter wavelength long, what we can do, since we've got three radials, we'll just cut three sections of cardboard here. Roughly the same width. So once we've cut our cardboard, let's go ahead and place a notch one inch away from each end. So we'll go ahead and cut a couple notches, one up, one down, one inch away from either end. And we'll do this with all of our pieces of cardboard. Now that we've got our cardboard sections cut out, we can go ahead and place them together. Insert tab A into slot C, etc., etc. And now we have this nice triangle assembly. So taking our cardboard, framework that we put together earlier. Go ahead and just break it in the center like that. And now the radials you're going to loop around and twist around. Now you can see that we have that nice 45 degree angle of our radials in relation to our feed line and the vertical radiator. And here's our antenna suspended from a tree branch. And you can see our feed line, and you can see how that framework that we assembled out of cardboard holds all those radials quite nicely away from the feed line. And we have no complaints about the resonance of our antenna here in the 2 meter amateur band. We cut the elements, like I said, a little bit long, 20 inches. And you can see right here that that puts this doggone almost perfect at 146 megahertz. Well, let's test it under power. I've got it hooked to an Astro Spectra here, and we're at around 146 megahertz. Ford power is about 43 watts. Reverse power barely registers. So in review, what have we accomplished? Well, we took a 20 inch section of category 5 network cable and utilizing just that resource we constructed a ground plane antenna and interfaced it to a piece of 50 ohm RF feed line so that's pretty cool I've said it before and I'll say it again you can have the most awesome set of resources available to you in storage but they don't do you any good whatsoever if you don't have them with you when you need to do it what you carry on or about your body and upstairs in your mind is what will carry the day. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.